On March 3rd, at about 4 a.m., an explosion happened in the headquarters of Azerbaijan Popular Front Party, which is located in Telechkali District 8, Narman District. According to preliminary information, a fire started in the basement of the building after explosion of a gas cylinder. Although the firefighters put out the fire, the building suffered significant damage. Crack appeared in some parts of the building. The explosion also damaged some equipments in the building. Luckily, no one was injured or died in the accident. Yesterday evening, we left the place and there was no gas cylinder, said the businessman renting the basement of the building. The party moved to this building in the November of previous year. According to the party leadership, intentional explosion could also be the case. Shirazi Aliyev, father of soldier Orhan Aliyev, who died last December during military service, held a press conference in IRFS. Shirazi says the family was initially told that Orhan died of a heart failure. According to the opinion of the anatomic pathology exam, it was caused by blockage of arteries by blood clots. Another suggests it causes heart disease. Shirazi Aliyev doesn't consider any of these claims true, saying that his son was healthy and didn't have any disease or complaint. He's sure that his son was killed and thinks that his son was the victim of bullying. Orhan Aliyev died on December 12, 2013. Although three months have passed, those killed of the soldier's death haven't been found. After press conference, family of the soldier went to the presidential administration to complain about ineffectiveness of investigation, but they were told that they have come to the wrong shop. Journalists covering the event were treated rudely by the police. Camera of Maidan TV reporter was seized and content was deleted. Police treated the journalists rudely. On March 4th, Baku Court on Grave Crimes held a preliminary hearing on the case of Bizimyol newspaper journalist and human rights activist Paris Hashimli. Motions were filed by the lawyers to investigate torture reports by the journalists and render a special judgment on Chief of the Isolation Ward of the Minister of National Security, as well as recognize violation of Hashimli's rights of defense. Then the journalist lawyers objected to the composition of the jury on grounds that it included presiding Judge Novros Karimov, a former MNS investigator, Judge Remela Allahverdeva, who handed down a nine-year jail sentence to journalist Evaz Zeynalı, and also because the jury rejected every motion of defense without explanation. The objection remained unconsidered. In March sentence process, Paris Hashemli once again informed the court about poor detention conditions in M10 isolation ward. He noted that on March 6, he was not given an hour walk and was not allowed to meet his family or talk to them on the phone. The journalist asked the judge to send a letter to the isolation ward for ensuring his rights, but the judge said that this issue falls within the competence of the officials of the M10 isolator and he couldn't interfere. Note that Paris Hashemli was detained on September 17 by employees of the Minister of National Security. On September 18th, the journalist was handed down a two-month pretrial detention sentence by the Savoy District Court under two articles of the Azerbaijan Criminal Code, Article 206.3.2, smuggling of firearms on preliminary arrangement by an organized group, and Article 228.2.1, illegal purchase, transfer, selling, storage, transportation, and carrying of firearms, their accessories, supplies, and explosives by an organized group. Paris Hashemli denies allegations and claims that he has been charged for the activity of journalism and human rights. Amnesty International has recognized Paris Hashemli as a prisoner of conscience. On March 6, Nesemi District Court of Baku extended the pretrial detention term of the Chairman of Election Monitoring and Democracy Studies Center, Anar Mehmetli, for three months, based on the request of the Prosecutor General's Office. Note that Anar Mehmedli was detained on 16 December 2013 on charge of running business without registration, tax evasion, and abuse of office. According to human rights activists, the real reason for Mehmedli's arrest was exposing government fraud during Azerbaijan's presidential election held last October. On March 6, a press conference was held at the press center of the Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety for protection of the rights of blogger Abdul Abilov. Human rights activist Rasul Jafar stated that currently there are five bloggers in prison, four of whom are charged under the Article 234.4.3 of the Criminal Code, illegal purchase or storage without the purpose of selling of narcotics or psychotropic substances in a quantity exceeding necessary for personal consumption, is punished by imprisonment for the term ranging 5 to 12 years. Abdul's mother Nurjahan Abilova said her son was innocent. He simply couldn't bear injustice and called for an end to it, she said. She also added that computers of all charged bloggers had been seized by the police. Bloggers lawyer Khalid Bagara said the investigation is not conducted properly. He believes that it is needlessly prolonged. They haven't yet examined the seized drug for finger marks. 
Because Abdul Abilov has no connection with the drugs and he doesn't have fingerprints on them, he noted. Involvement of police officers in criminal case against Facebook users was criticized at the conference. Note that activist Abdul Abilov was arrested on 25th November 2013. Nermov District Court placed him in pretrial detention. He created and managed a page on Facebook which he named, let's say no to flatterers. After his detention, the page was closed. He was detained by the Organized Crime Department of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. On March 6, passenger carriage conductors of the Baku Department of Azerbaijan Railways held a press conference at IRFS protesting their dismissal. One of the sect employees, Mirsahib Sahibov, spoke about massive dismissal of the passenger carriage conductors with up to 30-year work experience since 2007. He added that only 300 of the 3,000 older staff remain on the job. More than 450 female conductors have been hired since 2007, and this is still continuing. Dismissal of male employees for poor service was considered baseless. Accusations like sale of drugs, robbery, and failure to keep passenger carriage clean are made to discredit them, says the sect staff. Conductors of Baku Russia trains were discharged with excuse like lack of Russian language knowledge and falling short of European standards in terms of service to passengers. But these arguments were considered absurd by them. In the view of the conductors, the reason for their mass dismissal is embezzlement of their money for a long time. Giving sack to us, railway leadership tried to cover up the financial crimes that they committed and to elude justice, said Sahibov. Under the pretext of maintenance, purchase of new trains and so on, millions of government funds are misappropriated and they open businesses for themselves, said the conductors. Railway workers assess all this as an official arbitrariness, negligence to the fate of citizens and a violation of human rights. They particularly noted that behind this arbitrariness stand the chief of the Azerbaijan Railways, Arif al Askarov, leadership of the railway system and Minister of Transportation, Ziyam Madov. After many unaddressed appeals sent to the stated bodies for monthlies, the conductors say they are obliged to turn to foreign embassies for help in getting SLM. A group of Masali dwellers held a press conference on March 7th at the press center of Institute for Reporters' Freedom and Safety. Main target of criticism during the press conference was the chief of the Masali district executive branch, Rafik Hussainov. Residents talked about the targeted social assistance, education, road construction, and privatization of lands with fake documents, negligence of officials to the complaints, illegal use of public water reservoirs, and illegal exploitation of sand and gravel fields, bribery cases in hospital, and numerous other fields. Yadigar Sadegov, advisor to the head of the Musavat party, who is in prison, has been awarded Isahan Ashur Prize. The award, named after a prominent lawyer and public figure Isahan Ashur, was founded by the Institute for Peace and Democracy and is awarded to lawyers, military men, and citizens actively protecting human rights and the rule of law. On January 13th, this year, Sadegov was sentenced to six years imprisonment.